Now for this question then, what I've done is first of all just copied down what we're given. And so what we need to do is put on some more forces on this particle here. We're told that this particle has a weight of W Newton. So first of all, let's just put W Newtons going downwards then. And it's held in equilibrium on a rough plane inclined at, to the horizontal at an angle alpha. We're also told that tan of alpha equals three quarters. So we'll just mark that in over here, tan alpha equals three quarters. That's quite important because we're going to be doing some work with sines and cosines in this question because we're bound to be resolving forces. So I'm going to put that as alpha. Tan is opposite over adjacent so that represents three units to every four in that direction. And this is a familiar 3, 4, 5 triangle by Pythagoras' theorem. So when it comes to things like cos alpha, we can do it as adjacent over hypotenuse, 4 fifths. And sine alpha will be opposite over hypotenuse, 3 fifths. So that saves an awful lot. We're also told that the coefficient of friction, that's mu, is equal to 1 half. So we'll just put that in there. OK, well, this particle is held in equilibrium then on this rough incli inclined plane by this horizontal force of four newtons. And what we need to do is we're told that the particle is on the point of sliding down the plane. And we've got to find out the normal reaction between the particle and the plane, show that it's 20 newtons, and also find the weight w. Well, because the particle's on the point of sliding down the plane, I'd want to mark a force up with a plane, which is opposing motion. And that force will be, let's put it in red here, OK? Because it's on the point of slipping, it will have reached limiting friction mu r, r being the normal reaction here. Let's mark in it as r newtons. This will be mu r, mu r newtons. In fact, I could take that mu out and just write it as a half. It would save time. It's up to you. I'm going to actually write that as a half r at this stage, OK? Now, if you've been watching many of my other tutorials, you'll see that whenever I've got a force pushing into an object, I never like this. I always opt to take this out and push it through the particle out the other side. So this 4 Newton force, I'm going to mark in as 4 Newtons acting out this side, OK? And do away with this. I think it makes the problem a lot easier to solve. So we'll just take that 4 Newtons out. Now, when we're dealing with motion on a plane, then we should, I feel, draw a dotted line somewhere down here, OK, and a dotted line in this direction. Because we're going to be looking at forces acting parallel to the plane and perpendicular to the plane. And this angle in here is going to be exactly the same angle as the plane, alpha, and this angle here also is going to be alpha. It corresponds to this angle here. OK, so if we're to show that R is 20 newtons, I'm going to need to do some resolving. Resolving parallel to the plane and perpendicular to the plane. And it doesn't matter which way, which one you start with first of all, but I'm going to resolve up the plane parallel to the plane. Up the plane is going to be positive. Now, I'm assuming that you're familiar with resolving forces. It's always a topic that seems to cause problems. Now, you should be able to resolve without resorting, really, to another diagram. But I'm going to draw another diagram in here very quickly just to show you what is happening. But I normally would not do this myself. What we've got is our particle here. And we're looking at resolving on these dotted lines. 
looking at the forces acting on them. And you can see that already we've got the R that acts on that dotted line, R newtons there. Okay, we'll mark that in. All of the mu r, the frictional force, because the particles on the point of sliding down the plane, all of that acts upwards on this dotted line. So we can mark that in as mu r, or in my case, I'm just going to mark it in as a half r newtons. But as for the four newtons and the weight w newtons, none of those forces act on these dotted lines. They're inclined to them, so we need to split them into components. So starting with the 4 Newton force, we're going to have that force split into two components. This will have to be between this one and this one here. Let's mark those in. We'll just mark them in in this color. So we've got one component acting up the plane and one acting into the plane. Now remember, in the past, I've said to you, the one that contains the angle is always going to be involved with cos of alpha, and the one that doesn't contain the angle is going to be sine of that angle. So we've got this component will be for cos alpha, because it contains the angle. We'll just mark that in as for cos alpha. And the one that acts into the plane doesn't contain alpha, that will be 4 sine alpha. And these are both forces measured in newtons. Now we'll look at the weight w newtons. That can be split into two components, one down the plane and one into the plane. Let's just mark those in. Let's mark them in, in green this time. So we've got those two components, one into the plane and one down the plane. The component that contains the angle alpha is the one into the plane. So that's going to be W cos alpha, and that'll be measured in newtons. The one that doesn't contain alpha will be the sine of alpha, W sine alpha newtons. So we've got all our forces now on this diagram. We've moved them onto these dotted lines here. OK, well, as I said earlier, I wouldn't normally draw this. I would just get on with the equation itself. So we're resolving up the plane. If we do that, we've got all of this force in the positive sense, half r. And you can see that over here. And I've also got the component of the four newtons acting up the plane. So that's going to be in the positive sense, plus 4 cos alpha. And again, you can see it over here. Now, if we look at the component of the weight now acting down the plane, it's going to be W sine alpha. So it's going to be acting in the opposite sense to this, so it'll be minus W sine alpha. And as for the reaction from the plane here, well, that's perpendicular to this direction that we're resolving in, so it has no effect. So you can see here then that this is the resultant force acting on the particle up the plane. And that resultant force, because it's in equilibrium, must equal zero. So all we need to do now is just substitute our values in. We've got that the cosine of alpha is adjacent over hypotenuse, so that's going to be 4 fifths. So 4 times 4 fifths, well that's going to give us 16 over 5. And then minus W times sine alpha, sine alpha is opposite over hypotenuse, 3 over 5. So 3 fifths times W is going to be 3W over 5 and that equals zero. Now what we can do now is times through by 10. If we times through by 10, we're going to get 5r for this term. Times through by 10 here, we just need to double the 16, so that's going to be 32. And times this term by 10, and you end up with minus 6w, and that equals zero. Now, I'm just going to leave this a little bit of space here because we're going to need another equation, because we've got two unknowns here, r and w. And when I'm going to be dealing with simultaneous equations, I don't know how the next equation is going to fall out. So I'm just going to leave a space there. 
Right, let's just move on and we'll resolve now perpendicular to the plane. So resolving perpendicular to the plane, I'm taking away from the plane as positive. You can take into the plane as positive, it's up to you, but I'm taking away purely because I know that R will be positive then. So starting with R, all of R acts perpendicular to the plane, so that would be R. You can see that the half R newtons, the frictional force, is perpendicular to the direction we're resolving, so has no effect. The four newtons can be split into two components, one up the plane and one down into the plane, and it's that one that we're interested in. And as you can see over here, it is for sine alpha, and it acts in the opposite sense to this, so it's going to be minus for sine alpha. And then we've got the component of the weight. One goes down the plane, that's going to have no effect because it's at right angles to the direction we're resolving in. The component that we're interested in is W cos alpha, as you see over here. And it acts in the opposite sense to the direction we have here, so it'll be minus W cos alpha. Well that's it, that is all the forces taken care of there, and again because it's in equilibrium there is no resultant force, so we can make it equal to zero. And if we substitute our values in again, we end up with R minus 4 times sine alpha, 4 times 3 fifths, well that's going to be 12 fifths and then minus W times cos alpha, that would be 4 fifths, and so that would be 4W over 5, and that equals 0. And what I could do now is times both sides by 5, and I therefore get 5R minus 12 minus 4W equals 0. Now it's worth hanging on because I can see that both of these equations have got 5r in them, so we could easily eliminate 5r. So if I was to call this equation 1 and call this equation 2, then what I can do is simply just subtract them from one another. In fact, what we'll do is we'll get rid of that, okay, and we'll just carry on from there. Let's just draw a line across there. I know what I'm trying to do is squeeze this all into one kind of video screen without having to scroll, so uh, do bear with me on this. So what we're going to do is equation 1 minus equation 2. So 5r minus this 5r, well that cancels. 32 minus minus the 12, well that's going to be 44, so we've got 44 minus 6w, minus minus 4w, so that becomes minus 2w, and that equals naught, take away naught, which is naught. And so you can see that 2w must equal 44, and therefore w must equal 22. So the weight, 22 newtons then. Now that we've got w equals 22, very easy, all we need to do now is just substitute this into either equation 1 or 2. I'm going to put it into, say, equation 2, sub uh, into 2, and if we do that, we're going to have 5r minus 12 minus 4 times 22, 4 times w, 4 times 22, so that's going to be minus 88, and that equals 0. So therefore you end up with 5r equals 12 plus 88, if you add that to the other side, which is 100. So if we now divide both sides by 5, we end up with r equaling 100 divided by 5, which is 20. And that's what we had to show for part 1. OK, it's fallen out in a different order to the question, but nonetheless, I think that's the easiest way to go about this question. So we've done part one there, and we've got part two, w equals 22, okay?